Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to be doing a review on the Sanjin Mod 10.1 custom ROM for the Galaxy S3. This is a nightly build, which are ROMs which are updated every day to fix bugs, so it's very nice. This is based off 4.2.2 Jelly Bean, which is the latest firmware for Android. And you can check out my how-to tutorial on how to install this ROM. So, yeah guys, this has been a very nice ROM, so let's just get into this. The first thing we're going to be looking at is the lock screen. I like to keep everything very minimal, so I just have a basic clock widget right here, which tells me the weather and my Facebook notifications. Swiping to the right, I've got my calculator widget right here, and you can automatically access your calculator. Swiping right, we can add a widget just like that, and we can go on, let's just add a clock widget, shall we? As we see, now we have a clock widget showing our weather and date, so that's really nice. Let's just remove that quickly. So that's a nice touch. Swiping that way, we can get quickly to the camera. So automatically you can take your photos and snap them, so that's also a nice touch. And basically all you have to do to um, unlock your screen is touch this lock ring and then swipe to the right. And just like that you have got into your home screen guys now guys we're in the home screen so let's just um, swipe down to get to our notification center and so we're on our notification center we can see I've got my toggles there I like this much better than the Samsung ones and clicking on the button on the top right we get to our quick settings we can see got my profile picture there from Google Plus. I've got my brightness setting, so clicking on that, I turn down and turn up my brightness. Then we got a, a quick access to the settings. We got Wi-Fi, cellular, and battery. And also we have airplane mode, Bluetooth, and camera. So what camera does is like when you touch on it, you can automatically take photos, so that's also a nice touch and yeah guys and quickly to get to quick settings all you have to do is swipe down with two fingers or when you swipe down once all you have to do is like swipe on this bottom bar here so that's also nice and very quick to get to quick settings so yeah guys so going on to the settings this is all where the fun happens so the first thing we'll notice is under interface there is lock screen so clicking on that we can see screen security this is where you can choose to want how to unlock your phone. So there's many ways such as none, slide, face unlock, pattern, pin, and password. These are all various ways to unlock your phone. I just like keeping it to slide so it's very nice. So going back, we can see there is background. So the basic, basically, this is to change your lock screen wallpaper, which is different to your normal home screen wallpaper. Then we have battery status, which basically allows you to see how much percentage your battery has when it's charging or not charging. I always keep it at only when charging. So that's it for that. Going to clock widget. I never use it, but you can see clock and alarm with the panel and calendar events. Maximize widgets is something when you lock your screen, your widgets are basically maximized and not small and minimized. So I always like to keep that on. And slider shortcuts is a neat thing. So when you're sliding to the right to unlock your screen, there, there are basically many more uh, placeholders where you can put applications so you can quickly get to them. So I put all my four that I like. So Facebook, phone, my music player and messaging. So you can do that to customize how you want it. The next thing is button actions. So basically this allows you to set actions to the buttons on the lock screen. So you can choose to long press your back button, home button and menu button. So basically this allows you to uh, go to the next song, previous song, play, pause music, you can toggle sound and also you can turn on the flashlight. So that is always nice. So that is it for the lock screen settings inside the interface. Moving on to the next setting, this is one called theme. So basically you can pick your theme. I, only, I don't have themes as I have an icon pack on my custom launcher. So you can choose the themes you want if you like to customize your phone that way. So going back to uh, the settings menu, we can go to system settings and go status bar. So basically we can go show clock, so it turns on and off the clock. AM, PM style how you want it. 
and battery status style under general so you can choose your icon percentage circle circle with percentage or hidden if you don't want to see your battery percentage so that's very nice going to signal status style we see icon text and hidden so if you want to see how much uh, range you get for your cellular network you can always do that or you can hide it you can go brightness control by scrolling across the status bar so basically all you have to do is touch the status bar and then move across and left to pull it down or up so that's always nice and also when you have notifications or multiple notifications for one application this is what show notification count does it shows you how much notifications you have for that application on your um, notification bar uh, status bar so going back we see quick setting panels you can go quick pull down which allows you to quickly pull down to quick settings so going left you can always set that to right or you can turn it off. Auto close, close panel is why when you click on a toggle it will automatically close the whole notification center. Tiles in layout is to choose if you want more tiles. So if we go add we can see how much you can put. You can put a lot inside it but I always like to keep it as I want. So you can always customize it to your own preferences. Going to sound modes, we can choose silent, vibrate sound, and sound and vibrate for all the sound modes in the quick settings panel. Going to network modes, we can see if you want to always change it to 2G to 2G plus 3G, or just 2G 3G, or 2G 3G, 2G plus 3G. So you can always change it like that. Going to screen, screen timeout modes, you can always choose it from 15 seconds, 30 seconds, all that. Going to dynamic tiles, this are tiles which automatically update themselves like alarm clock, bug report, IME, change in USB tether. There should be more tiles coming out like that. So going back to notification drawer, we see a power widget. So power widget is basically all these toggles here, like what Samsung implements into their TouchWiz interface. And then we go to widget buttons. You can choose what you want up there. And that's always nice. And you can change everything, flash mode, sound mode, screen timeout modes, network modes, and brightness modes. And then you can choose the widget button order on how, how you want them from swiping left to right. So that's always nice. And you can always go close or on chain. So when you click on a toggle, you can automatically close it on the change. You can hide the scroll bar like that. So if there's a scroll bar, you can just hide it. So that's always nice and haptic feedback so you get a vibration when you turn on and off the toggle expanded desktop is basically it takes off uh, this is usually f for it turns off the notification center and if you want to unlock it back you can always do so I always keep it off because I always want quick access going to power menu you can go when you um, long press the power button you can see your power menu so you got reboot screenshot profile switcher airplane mode and sound panel and then going down to clock widget we can see the clock what you want on your home screen and uh, notification light I've disabled it and if you just want to turn it on you just turn it on just like that going to hardware keys we can go enable custom actions so home keys always for recent app switches so I long press you see I've got my multitasking there and then menu key is to open close menu and long press I get to Google now uh, battery light is basically when your phone's on battery low it'll go red charging that uh, yellow and fully charged green I turn it off because I don't want to be annoyed by that when it's charging and that's about it for the system preferences in Scientist mod 10.1 So basically now what I want to cover is um, the battery uh, life of this ROM. The battery life I've been getting is very strong and it's given me great performance around 2 hours plus of screen usage and I could get around the whole day without any no problem. And so the next thing we're going to be looking at is camera. The camera on 4.2.2 Jelly Bean is very nice. It's a nice interface. We go settings that way. We can see storage, scene mode. Store location, power shutter, picture size, focus mode, touch focus duration, ISO, JPEG quality, uh, color effect, persistence, hand free, and burst mode. One new thing that was introduced was this uh, hands free mode, so you can speak, timer, and nothing. 
So that's very nice. We can also go front facing camera just like that. We also have HDR functionality and you can always turn off flash like that. So that's always nice. So guys, this has been a quick uh, review of the Sanjin Mod 10.1 nightly build for the Galaxy S3. I, I like this ROM a lot and it's given me great usage. I've been using this for two months now and it's very nice. So thank you guys for watching this review. Please like, rate and subscribe and goodbye.